Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 and the third part of this experiment where we're taking a look at what would happen if a non-league English team had perfect facilities, the perfect shell to the club, that's the best stadium, youth facilities, training facilities, it's all there. Now there was a bit of a screw up where the second part of this experiment came out before the first part so I don't know how many of you actually watched the second part to this. If you haven't you can just find it on my channel, it's there to be watched now um, or you can just watch this one it's totally up to you but that second one is there if you want to watch that before you watch this one um, if you are enjoying the experiment do drop a like on the video though and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new but what we're going to do today we're in the year 2032 we're going to jump 20 more years into the future um, and see how Spenny more get on because last time we left off they had just made it into the championship they had three straight promotions winning the National League, uh, then League 2, League 1 they finished 4th but went up through the playoffs, then they started to rise from 16th to 8th, 10th, 8th and then they had a new owner come in, I think it was this season here and with the new owner came a huge amount of money um, in debt. Uh, so the owner must have bought the club using leveraged funds and then put that against the club on their finances, a bit like the Glazers did with Manchester United. And since then, we've seen a little bit of a decline. So the interesting question now is, are they ever actually going to make it into the Premier League? They've still got 150,000 capacity stadium. Uh, if we look at the club details, they still have... Um, well, they don't have any money now because they've spent it on transfers, but they still have good training and youth facilities. Junior coaching, youth recruitment, corporate facilities, all looking pretty good as well. The question is, can they keep generating enough income to get them up into the Premier League? With the kind of capacity they've got, you'd imagine they should make it there eventually um, because they are bringing in a huge amount of money that no other club can match in terms of um, fans through the turnstile. So it's an enormous amount of income. Um, but it's whether they can get the other funding they need to really kick on to that next level. So let's jump forward to the year 2052, and we're going to see how they've done after finishing 20th in the championship in their most recent season. Or did they finish 12th? 20th or 12th? Let's have a quick look at the championship table, uh, and we'll just clarify that. Uh, we can see Spennymore did finish 12th. So they finished 20th the year before that. They finished 12th this time. Can they keep in the championship, maybe push into the Premier League, or are they about to begin a really steep decline? Well, we are now a year, uh, 20 years into the future. We're going to go through their seasons pretty quickly, one at a time, and see if they make it up into the Premier League. You can see in this first season here, a little bit patchy, but generally quite a consistent season, getting a lot of wins, knocked out by Arsenal in the FA Cup. But they did make the playoffs, so this is their first chance of making it into the Premier League. And you can see they won the first game against Cardiff 3-1, a very comfortable win by the looks of it. But then they lost on penalties, the away goals... Uh, not a thing in the playoff semi-finals. And it went 2-0 to Cardiff here after 3-1 first leg defeat. And they managed to do it on penalties. If Bobby Carroll had not missed his penalty, they would have won. And Johnny Harbinson missing the last one to give Cardiff the victory. And so they didn't make it to Wembley for the playoff final. The next year, again, pretty consistent season. A few rough patches scattered about it. Um, got to the fifth round of the FA Cup against Southampton, but then this really poor run of form towards the end of the season meant they did miss out on the playoffs. The season after that, doing well in the Carabao Cup, got through to the third round but then knocked out. Uh, a lot of defeats in their league season out of the FA Cup as well. This has not been a great season for them and they did not finish in the playoffs. Another terrible season here. Look at all these defeats very early on. Uh, they did pick up their form here, probably a new manager coming in. Uh, you can see they made it into the FA Cup fourth round before being taken out by Wolves. And then a poor finish to the season as well. Um, I mean, that start was always going to make it difficult. But the season after, they started extremely well. Unfortunately, Newcastle down in the championship at this point. Um, beat Manchester City in the Carabao Cup on penalties, but then lost to Chelsea. That's a tough draw for a championship team. They did well to take both those clubs to penalties but Man City got some revenge later on this has been a brilliant season uh, up to the end point here where they start to lose a few games but then a good push with a lot of victories at the end I think they've made the playoffs and indeed they have a 2-1 win 
against Bolton in the first game. And then a 1-1 draw despite going down to 10 men late on means they're into the championship fi- uh, playoff final for the first time. And they've gone out on penalties. An 87th minute equaliser for Tom Brown must have given them so much hope. But then after extra time, they missed all three penalties to get knocked out by Brighton and remain in the championship for yet another season. And this one, starting off badly again, a bit of a recurring theme. Did go through against Plymouth, but then lost to Manchester United 3-0 away from home. They'll get some good gate receipts from that. Not as important at this level. Pretty reasonable finish this season. Only three defeats there, but they didn't sneak into the playoffs, probably because they drew so many games. Um... The year after that, a good Carabao Cup run, being knocked out by Chelsea in the fourth round. Very poor season, though. There's just nowhere near enough wins. They did make it to the FA Cup fifth round before being beaten by West Ham. Um, I mean, that's just a really poor season. I hope the manager got sacked after that. Um, Year after that, still going here um, in the Championship. This is getting a little bit repetitive, but a strong, very strong end to the season here means they did make it to the playoffs. Uh, Drew the first game against Aston Villa, 1-1 at home. But then a 2-0 win at Villa Park got them to Wembley, their second playoff final. And they've lost that one as well. 2-1, an 88th minute winner by Phil Hickey gives Norwich the place in the Premier League. But they've come back even stronger the year after. You can see the number of wins they've got here. This is an automatic promotion push right here. There's very few defeats beaten by West Brom in the FA Cup. Um, but they've definitely won the league that year. There's no doubt about it. They have won the league. Certainly automatic promotion. Uh, which year was that? I should have checked before I jumped onto the league. Uh, that was the year 2040-41. If we just have a quick look at the table here, going back to 2040-41, uh, then we can see that they did win as champions. 12 points clear there. Um, a very good season for them, which means they have finally made it to the Premier League and here you can see their first run out in the Premier League didn't start that well Uh, they got a draw against Crystal Palace at home and then away to Sheffield Wednesday beaten 3-1 by Liverpool at Anfield though their first defeat Um, and then they finally beat Spurs here 2-1 in front of 140,000 fans they managed to get their first ever top flight win it's a really tough season for them they had a good run here with three victories Aston Villa, Crystal Palace and Everton, Everton But that's a lot of defeats. That's relegation territory. That is horrific. What a run of form that is. You have three defeats here over Christmas. You think you might just pull out of the relegation scrap, getting nine points. Um, And then you go on this horrific run where you only beat Wolves and Fulham across all these games. So definitely back down in the championship. Uh, But you can see they're doing all all right here. They're winning a lot of games. Quite a sustainable club financially, I think, uh, with the stadium that they've got. Um, You can see they did make it into the playoffs again, so not an automatic promotion this time, but they beat West Brom over the two legs and then got revenge on Norwich on penalties with 10 men um, to go through in the playoff final. So finally won a playoff final, but then another horrific Premier League season. One point there across their first 10 games or so. Oh, yeah, that even carries on 15 games. They only managed to get one point. Little unbeaten run, 3 November, Leeds. 1-1 1-1 at home against Arsenal is a good result. Uh, they did also finally manage to beat Crystal Palace for their first win of the season and then backed it up with their second, 3-1 against Aston Villa. But then the defeats kept on coming. They just can't quite hack it at this level and definitely relegated once more. Another good season in the Championship, though. Made it to the Carabao Cup semi-final and actually beat Manchester United 2-0 at home before losing 2-0 away and getting knocked out on penalties. That is really unfortunate. So close to their first real major final. Um, you can see they did really well at the end of the season here. I think they've gone up automatically. They did indeed. And then they've got smashed yet again. They just cannot stay in the Premier League no matter what they do. They did beat Liverpool 2-1 at home though. That's a nice result. Um, just seeing if there's any other big upsets here. They did beat Chelsea as well 2-1. Um, but not a lot of great results in there. Uh, win on the final day, probably not enough, and it wasn't. Um, they did win a lot of their first games back in the Championship, though. Another really good season. Definitely promoted, only to be knocked straight back down yet again. Um, they really are the definition of a yo-yo club. What a January, though. 
I hope the manager got manager of the month there. I mean, they played Chester and Lincoln in the cup, but wins over Everton and Crystal Palace, not enough for them, despite their two wins at the end of the season here, including against Chelsea. Back down in the championship, and it's not as sweet this time. It doesn't look like they've made it back up there. And indeed, still down in the championship the next season. A uh, good run, but not enough. And once more, still in the championship. Beaten in the playoffs by Tranmere Rovers of all teams. Uh, they have a good season this time around, uh, doing quite well. Um, and I think they may well have got promoted out of this season. If I just have a quick look at the championship, I'm pretty sure they did from what I remember seeing when we did look at the league table before. Uh, if we go to the current season, yep, they finished second, seven points behind Newcastle as champions, uh, but three points clear of Stoke. So a good season for them there, managing to make it back into the Premier League, where hopefully they might actually be able to stay for once. But this has been quite disappointing that over 20 years, they haven't quite uh, done what you might imagine they could have, because this is where we left off. It was here. This, this was the season we left off when they finished 12th couple of good seasons bouncing up and around the top half of the championship before finally winning it but then look at that just absolute yo-yo that's four relegations in four seasons in the Premier League you don't see that often normally the team will try and will stay up for at least one extra season before getting their second season and going second season syndrome and going down but not with Spenny Moore knocked straight back down and then they took a big knock finishing the highest they ever have actually they finished 18th but then knocked straight down. I am going to have a quick look at their um, Premier League history um, in terms of the league table at least, least. If we just go back and have a quick look at the Premier League um, and then go to the stages and just drop back a few seasons here. And there they are. So they only missed out by two points in their most recent season. Finishing one point clear of Everton, but two points behind Norwich. Very close there. Um, the time before that, seven points off. Crystal Palace well clear of them, um, even in the relegation area. And then they finished bottom with just 18 points the season that they're in the league before that. Uh, I mean, that's a good 21 points off. And in their first season in the Premier League, only five points from safety, but a low point total there, keeping Crystal Palace up on goal difference ahead of Newcastle. Um, and they've just not really cut the mustard. And I think we'll probably get an inkling as to why if we have a look at the club's kind of information. You can see their capacity has dropped down to 10,000, despite uh, dropped by, down by 10,000, despite, despite still being a very good uh, stadium, which is a little bit, Disappointing. Built in the year 2032. That looks a little bit unusual, given that we changed the stadium quite a while ago. I'm not quite sure what happened there. Built in 2032. Now, it doesn't make any sense. Let's have a quick look at their landmarks as a club and go down to 2032. Move to Spennymore Stadium completed. I do not understand what has just happened there. Bear in mind that we built them their new stadium. That's a very unusual glitch in the game, I would have a guess. Um, now, we can see there was a failed takeover bid in 2033 before the new one came in in 2034. Um, and then another one failed before a consortium took over. Um, and then another chairman came in, a new consortium. If we have a quick look at their general information... Um, uh, there's not a lot of information there, is there? I'm trying to see. They've only got 512 season ticket holders still, and I think this is a big issue um, in the game that they haven't fixed that. Uh, the facilities, we've seen that already, 2032, top corporate and all the rest of it. Um, I'm just wondering if where well, we can see their debt. I'm not sure if we can actually see it here. I might have to become the manager of the club to see that. But if we ever edit the club details, the reputation's looking pretty good. Their attendance, though has dropped massively. They've got a maximum attendance of 160,000, but their minimum's now dropped to 37,500. Bank balance really struggling, not much tra transfer or wage budget. Um, and their facilities still looking good. They've got some new youth facilities, still got decent training facilities. Um, and I just wanna have a quick look at their under 18s and see if we've got many good players. If we just look at their general info, not a lot to see there. Under 23s, not a lot to see there. And then their senior squad. I'm just wondering if they've got any players who've come through uh, their academy. I'll do a search on the uh, 
transfer list or you know the player list soon for players trained at Spennymore and see if they've got any big big name players that have come through their academy if we have a look at their transfer history first so going back to 31 32 uh, so when they left off they were not spending a lot of money they had recently got new owners come in though um, and they, that was when all the debt appeared. I think that must have been to build the new stadium rather than anything else. But you can see more money going out than coming in. Bit of money spent there. Big transfer season this year. This is 2034-35. I'm not sure if this was a Premier League season or not. Um, but you can see the money starting to go out the club a bit here. They're not making any profit. Um, and then a huge one. 80 million spent, about 104 uh, coming into the club. Um, and then another season where they make a £50 million profit. They finally go and spend a bit of cash. Uh, but again, a huge profit comes in the year afterwards. And then another big profit the year after that. Another big profit the year after that before they go and spend a little bit. Um, and then an enormous £243 million goes out of the club. Absolute fire sale of their best players there. Um, huge amounts of money here. They made so much money on transfer profits. There's absolutely no doubt about that. That is a ridiculous amount of money. If we look at their best 11 here, we've got Frank Perry, uh, 75 in 205. He's now an assistant manager. Uh, didn't start at the club, but had a decent time there. Not a lot of goals, to be fair. Bearing in mind, he's in their top player list. And now we have a player here who's got a 7.04 average rating, but his record has not been kept. Um, any other 7.0s? Not that I can see. Frank Perry looks like the next player. There is Tom Brown, who managed to get 82 goals. He's still playing. Now, he's at Villarreal. He did start as a spending more player. He was with them in the Premier League as well, but didn't get a lot of goals. Really struggled there, despite being all right in the Championship. Uh, but he's one of their players who did come through. Went to Schalke. Didn't do very well. Now at Villarreal. Um, but we can have a look at those in a bit more detail later on i'm just a little bit disappointed that they've not done more with the money that they've brought in in their transfers they're still in debt now so i just don't know where their cash has gone i'm gonna have a quick look and make myself manager of the club right we're in the club and i can see the finances here so we're looking here going back five years the money dipping down then it's came in in a huge way uh, this is when their transfers came in and then just slowly being ebbed away down to nothing now they're back in the red Profit and loss bouncing all over the place. A huge amount of profit this season. Um, income this month, they managed to bring in 2.9 million, but 21 million spent. Let's have a look at their income um, over the last season, or just generally. You can see that the orange here is player sold, so that's when they sold all these players. But generally, a large amount of money coming into the club in players sold. Player expenditure also pretty high, but this chart goes up to 61 million. That one goes up to 134. So you've got to keep that in mind when this one looks like it's got more peaks. It's just not quite the same. Now, where is the money going? This is expenditure. If we sort it by last season, player wages, 36 million, transfers, 30 million, ground maintenance, 21 million. That's where most of the money's going. There's a few other categories sitting around 5 million. In terms of income, 50 million in players sold, so that's a profit. 28 million in gate receipts and 90 million in sponsorship, uh, corporate facilities income and all the rest of it. Um, but they just don't have that much income coming in. They're still relying on the gate receipts, but bearing in mind that ground maintenance is 21 million and their gate receipts are 28 million, that's only a seven million pound profit. And then you've got your match day expenses of nine million, so they're losing money on their gate receipts, which is crazy. How much are their um how much is the money coming into the club there at a gate receipt they must only be taking a really small amount of money now the net debt's gone down to 39 million they've been paying that for quite some time i think or they certainly had a huge amount of debt before um you can see the sponsorship here their projections going forward they are projected to make quite a bit of cash in the future i'd be surprised if that actually happened um but it's just a bit frustrating that they've got all this money going out they've got money coming into the club through transfers but they're just it all just seems to be disappearing somewhere and it's quite frustrating all right so i've done a search for all of the players trained at spennymore and you can see they've got a few incredible players on the uh role of honor here so kevin ward the most valuable player 
26 years old. Only played six games for England, though. Um, but he is an attacking midfielder. He was only at Spennymoor for a couple of seasons, barely played three games there before moving to Man City for just £425,000, where he then went on loan a couple of times uh, and doesn't have the best average rating. He doesn't really do a lot on the pitch either, but apparently that makes him worth 66 million. There's also Hugo Miramontes here, uh, who's a 31-year-old left winger. Beautiful stats across the board. Um, now, he was actually at River Plate for a while and then signed for £2.3 million by Spennymore. Good piece of business that. Did well in the championship, getting quite a few assists and Man of the Match awards. And then moved to Manchester United for £93 million. An enormous transfer fee back in 41 42. And he's done really well there before moving to Real Madrid for £74 million. Um, I mean, he wasn't playing, he's not played that many games. I wonder if that's down to injuries or not. But he's another big player. Not from their academy, though. Alfredo Guimarez, a good striker here with great finishing, dribbling, and first touch. He was at Boa Vista, taken to Spennymore, and then sold to Spurs for £34 million. Not a prolific striker. Steve Howard, £34 million valuation on him as a central midfielder. You can see now he is a Spennymore youth graduate. Spent a bit of time at South End on loan for breaking into the first team, and then a £30 million transfer to Liverpool for him. Michael Wing, uh, now at £42.5 million. He might be called Wing, but he plays in goal. He's got great goalkeeping stats there, though. Um, and he didn't survive for... Oh, no, he was at spending more. I'm looking at the loans there. Uh, went out on loan a couple of times before starting to break into the first team here and then became their first team player in the Championship. Uh, didn't do well in the Premier League, it has to be said, and got a £16 million movie. He's then bounced around quite a bit with his valuation fluctuating with it. Bob Bradford, currently at Newcastle. Uh, he is there on loan from Man City, a £6.5 million Man City signing. Uh, £21 million Tony Rowley, now at Norwich. Again, didn't spend an awful lot of time at Spennymore before moving to Preston for a £41.5 million fee in the Championship. They did get promoted, though, uh, and he's done well there. Uh, before being moved on to other clubs. Never quite in that seven-point average rating of a top, top player. Uh, and then if we just have a quick look at Steve Webster, the last player rated over £10 million, now at Watford. A bit of time at spending more, went out on loan to a lot of clubs and then signed for Watford just 775k. Uh, so those are the best spending more graduates. A lot of people did ask to see these, um, but that's pretty much all there is to see. Now there is a question here about what we do next because... We can see they've kind of stalled as a club, and I don't think they're going to do that well when they get back up to the Premier League. I think they're just going to get knocked straight back down to the Championship as they have the last four times. So I could give them some cash, which I'm reluctant to do. I could improve their reputation to attract better players, but if they haven't got the cash, that's not going to work either. Or I could just try and bump up the number of fans they've got coming through the gates because that's dropped to about 35,000. But I don't know if any of those things are really going to make any difference. So we might have to call this one a loss and end the experiment here. Now the choice is up to you guys. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see another part to this experiment uh, and tell me what you'd like to see, what you'd like me to do if that's what you want. Um, otherwise, we'll end it here and move on to the next experiment in a few days' time. Do drop a like on the video, though, if you've enjoyed this experiment. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. But until next time, see ya!